Did anyone else find this really frustrating when they watched the Chandler Smith documentary? I certainly did. <laughs> I'm sure he's a nice person and this is nothing against him as a human being. I'm sure he's lovely, but I have never liked Ben Bergeron's coaching techniques. And I'm gonna go into why and specifically why I have such a problem with this documentary. So in the latest news, Amanda Barnhart is another athlete on the list to leave comp train. This comes after Katrin leaving, Sam Quant, Brooke Wells, and a long list of people leaving comp train. There's been a few videos out there already trying to analyse the reasons why people might be leaving and Andrew Hiller had a few funny takes on this whole scenario. He noticed that Katrin's lifts actually decreased when working with Ben and also with Matt Fraser on the year that he won by over 200 points Ben thought Cole Sager's Spirit of the Games award was better than Matt Fraser's win. Me winning was number two and then his number one moment was Cole winning Spirit of the Games award. <laughs> I win fucking livid. I'm not going to talk about the performance side of things but I do recommend watching Andrew Hiller's video if you want to hear more about that side but I'm here to talk about his mindset coaching and he's very well known for coaching within mental toughness and I have always had a massive problem with this. We must weaponize our minds. I personally have a lot of knowledge in the field of mental toughness. I'm very mentally tough myself. I have struggled with a lot of mental health issues throughout my life and overcome many of them. I have battled a lot of things that no one should ever have to experience and I'm still here. When I used to compete in CrossFit a lot more, if any workout ever got tough and people started to suffer, that is where I excel because I'm strong in my mind and I know that I can push my body through anything. On top of that, I did a series called SAS Who Dares Wins here in the UK where they literally starve you, sleep deprive you, make you do long workouts for hours and hours on end, probably three to six hours were the longest ones where you were carrying men up mountains I fought an ex-SAS operative. They push us through a serious amount of savage tasks and my mentality never wavered. I also work in the field of mental health and education. I have a broad background around the topic of mental toughness. One of Ben's favorite things to say is focus on what you can control. Is also outside of her control and try as we may, we can't change or influence those things. We must learn to view those things as distractions that need to be ignored. And although that sounds nice and it sounds like it might be helpful, it's actually not. It's actually really dismissive of the emotions that someone's feeling. And focusing on the things you can control is not helpful when you're saying it to Catherine David's daughter who is unable to complete the next rope climb. That is not what she needs to hear right now. What actually is helpful in the situations where things start to get really tough is valid dating emotions. So listening to the person that's struggling and empathizing with them saying that must be really hard. How can we make a plan to tackle this for next time? Or that must be really difficult, but I'm really proud of how you handled this specific moment. It's not trying to brush under the carpet all of the difficult emotions and just focus on the positives. That is very similar to that toxic positivity that a lot of us experience when we have mental health issues and people tell us to just think positive or to be grateful. It is unhelpful and honestly causes more harm than good in the most part. For some people it might work but for most people it's proven not to be effective. You take a deep breath and like nothing's coming in. What I found particularly ridiculous about what happened in this documentary is in the moments when Chandler was literally having an asthma attack you can see he can barely breathe and he's not recovering for up to two hours after the event and Ben has just decided that he's gonna continue. Can't breathe, still can't breathe, it's gotta go on this one. We gotta get him ready. Even though Chandler clearly thinks it's best for his health and how he's feeling right now for him to just withdraw. I, I don't know how hard I can push competitively so I would really like to quit and he told me I couldn't quit. Because I think in his mind he knew there was no chance he was gonna recover in time to get back into the top eight to potentially get into the online qualifier. We're looking for a top eight overall. Try to get the last chance qualifier. Got it. That did not seem like a reality and Chandler has obviously experienced asthma attacks repeatedly throughout his life. You could see that he knew it was bad. Specifically in these clips though, it feels like Ben Bergeron is not giving Chandler 
any agency over his own choices. He's almost just telling him what to do and saying this is the right thing. You must carry on, you must not quit because that is like mental toughness in his mind. But actually in this scenario, mental toughness would be analyzing the situation in an honest way, viewing the right things to do and the wrong things to do and the consequences of each of those things and making a decision that would best benefit the athlete. Mental toughness is not just pushing through, frankly, an illness in order to come across more tough or to seem like you're a good coach or that your athletes aren't quitters because you want to come across as a coach that coaches mentally tough athletes. The phrases he was using was stuff like, we just need to manage this. It's so easy, man, to try to manage this as best we can. As if he could just manage his asthma with some sort of positive attitude or just like dismissing it and not really thinking about the fact that he can't breathe and pushing through. Just turn around. I can't breathe, man. Try to keep it under control. What's up? Just try to keep it under control so it can get ahead of you. That's gonna be a really good management. I just can't understand why a coach would do that. I think what he really needed here was a coach that was just gonna ask them straight out, what do you right now think is best for your health? And do you think you can carry on or do you think you need to withdraw honestly? And to analyze what's going on in his own head, giving him the agency to assess his own thoughts and work out whether he's just quitting because he wants to quit or whether he's quitting because he's looking after himself and his body. And they are two very different things. And being able to look at your own mindset and feel your own feelings and understand why you're making decisions, that is true mental toughness. It's really not pushing through so you don't come across a quitter to other people. And within this documentary, you could hear Ben and Chandler both talk repeatedly about other people's assumptions about them and the assumptions that they might make if he quits. If you quit, that everyone's gonna make up their own stories anyways. And and it seemed like that weighed a lot on the decision of whether to continue or not. Whereas if you're mentally tough, other people's opinions of what you're doing shouldn't matter. You should have a deep enough understanding of yourself and confidence in yourself to say, I am making the right decision for me, no matter what anybody else thinks. Someone that can do that is in a really good place mentally. It's clear all of the messaging that he was getting was just to not quit. At one point, Chandler says, there's nothing useful to be gained from negativity. And again, that's clearly coming from coaching that he has been experiencing. But again, this is wrong. Actually, we can gain a lot from negativity or literally just accepting the reality of a situation. From stepping back and saying, okay, this time is not my time. Clearly I'm unwell. What plans can we put in place for next time this happens? How can I learn how to manage my asthma better in competitive scenarios, which is clearly something he's worked on over the years. Failing is always a learning experience. And Will Smith has a really good quote on this. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. You have to get comfortable with failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You can learn so much from failure and so much from thinking about it, assessing why it happened and understanding it deeply. And again, that is true mental toughness. A lot of people run from negativity because they're scared of their own emotions. They're terrified to accept how they feel. At the end of the documentary, Ben gives Chandler a bit of a pep talk, but to me, it feels a bit like a motivational speech. Who you are as a person, forget about the athletic field, but who you are as a person is incredible. Obviously he's trying to make Chandler feel better about himself, but I feel like there were other things that we could have said here. Chandler is clearly an incredible athlete and he dealt with a lot of very difficult challenges. How he handled all of those situations was something to really be proud of. And honestly, I would have told him, I'm really proud of how you handled those situations. I know you're probably feeling awful right now because you wanted to qualify for the CrossFit Games and that must really suck, but you will come back and you will get back to the CrossFit Games. And this is only a minor setback that you're gonna learn a lot from. You've got a future ahead of you and I know you can do it. We will just take this as a learning experience and move forward. Chandler Smith is an incredible athlete, but also an incredible human. I love watching documentaries on him. I love watching all of the videos he's in. He's so funny, he's so determined and the amount he's come on in the last few years, especially with stuff like his technique, is incredible. Unfortunately, I feel 
you're like under comp train with this kind of attitude towards mental toughness that isn't really that helpful I don't think he's going to progress in that area a lot I feel like unless he is allowed to feel his own emotions and understand why things are going wrong he might end up going backwards like the other athletes part of me does wonder over the years seeing Katrin forcing herself to only think positively and to brush away the negative and honestly run from her emotions has caused her to not tackle the things that she needed to improve on and again Andrew touched on the point that it sounded like they had been avoiding rope climbs and pegboards because that might bring negativity whereas again that is not mental toughness. Mental toughness would have been recognising that and tackling it head on and saying this is something that we need to improve. I know it sucks to feel like you're bad at something but we get better by trying and that's what all of these athletes need. They need to analyse their weaknesses, not be scared of their emotions and tackle their weaknesses head on without being afraid that being negative will affect their mindset because if anything analysing failure and learning from it helps your mindset. I hope some of these athletes start to realise this in the future and I do wonder whether we're going to see more people leave comp train because of this. I also have to say the documentary was another amazing one by the Buttery Bros and I loved seeing a more vulnerable, more real story from one of the CrossFit athletes and I think the feeling that I was getting from a lot of the comments is that we don't always want to see the top athletes in the sport, we want to see all of the nitty gritty bits of all of these incredible people going through these struggles because it's empowering for us to see somebody overcome something so big. I hope you get to see more of these stories in the future. Please fist bump that like button if you enjoyed this video. Do you think CrossFit and the CrossFit media is inclusive? If you like this video watch this one next where I tackle that issue. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!